I couldn't find time in the budget for an intro. So tip zero is going to be use the Lumion Live Link with SketchUp. It's a pretty straightforward one and I feel like the majority of people are already using it, but I figured that I should at least mention it because it is a really big help. So if you don't use it, get it because it's one of the best things about SketchUp to Lumion. So you don't want to miss out on that. The more you play around with Lumion and the more you use the software, what you're going to notice is that if you actually model the geometry and then bring that into Lumion, it will almost always look better than if you just use a texture. Uh, the shadows are able to be more accurate. You can actually use certain effects on them like the fine detail that you really can't use with a texture. So I would always recommend taking that, some extra time going through and actually you know modeling the hardwood floor in. I made a tutorial about that, so I'll put the final version of that up on the screen so you can see how it came out. I think it came out really well, especially for um, Lumion, where I find that hardwood floors often look kind of flat because people are just using uh, simple textures. Even with the displacement map, uh, it really cannot compete with modeling everything. So if you have a bit of time to spend, put in the hardwood floor yourself, put the siding on yourself, maybe even model bricks if it's a you know exterior of a building and you really want those bricks to pop out. It will almost always look better if you do it manually than if you try and use a texture, even though textures are faster, so there is a time and a place to use it. Some of you may be aware of this as well, but I have a hardwood floor starter pack on the 3D warehouse and you can go and download it and it will save you a fair amount of time because I already have the boards in there. I've got them spaced out. I've already got the boards beveled. All you really have to do is make sure you have the planks right and then you just move them around the room, put some different materials on them and it's ready to go. So the link below if you want to get that or if you want to see the video on how that works. I made a video about this not that long ago, but I want to touch on it again because it's extremely important for SketchUp to Lumion users. If you put a shingle texture onto a SketchUp model and bring it into Lumion and then you put on one of the Lumion roofing materials, what you're going to notice is that it almost looks like someone dropped a texture directly onto the roof. All the shingles are going in the same direction. They're lining up and you don't want that. So what you can do inside of SketchUp is put the texture on because SketchUp will actually orient the shingles in the correct way. So what that means is that the, the texture is going in the right direction. You can just adjust the size until you find something that works in Lumion turn on the imported map scale, which is very important for that part. And then what's going to happen is Lumion's not going to try and make its own UV maps. It's only going to use SketchUp, which means that all of your SketchUp textures are now lined up. That's pretty much all you have to do. And it's a huge help. If you ever have problems putting bricks or bamboo or something on, but it works in SketchUp, just set the map to import it and then make it bigger in SketchUp if you have to and then there's no problem. I'll be honest with you, for a SketchUp user, I basically do not use a 3D warehouse. I think it's kind of a trap, and I think that you can find yourself with a file that's way too big for absolutely no reason. And I'm about to show you exactly why. Something I want you to take a look at is how slow my computer is in this scene. So there's only one object from the 3D warehouse in here. So you can imagine how bad it gets if you have 10 or 15. Now, look what happens when I delete the plants, the kitchen decorations, and also the fruits that are on the sideboard. Even if they weren't that heavy, we should probably be deleting them anyways because they're all kind of joined into this mesh where I want as much control over them as I can. Plus, Lumion has this massive library of plants, kitchen decorations, faucets, fruit. All of these things are already in Lumion. So if Lumion has them ready to go, why are we using them in SketchUp where they cost way more and quite frankly, don't look as good? If you do download a 3D warehouse model, I highly recommend you go and delete all of the textures that come with it because you don't know what size those textures actually are and they can take up a ton of room. For example, this file was 100 megabytes when I downloaded it and when I was finished actually doing my work with it, it was 800 kilobytes. So I could basically have as many of these in my file as I wanted if you go through and take the time to actually optimize it for your scene. SketchUp does absolutely nothing to kind of filter out the, the good and the bad models that are on the warehouse. So if you aren't willing to take the time and do this, you are going to have much, much slower scenes and you do not have as much control over your scenes when you use the 3D warehouse. Here's a little final example of the model rendered inside of Lumion. Now, personally, I don't really like it that much. I did do this really quick. It was only on three stars as well, but I will be coming out with a video on how to make kitchen cabinets inside of SketchUp and Blender without any add-ons coming up hopefully next week. And that's something I really like to do. And that is how I think you should do it, not use a 3D warehouse. But for those of you that are gonna use a 3D warehouse anyways, I really hope that this trick can help you out. A tip that I really like to do for SketchUp is to actually smooth all of the edges in a plane. Uh, I find them way easier to work with, especially if you wanna drape things on top of them. Now, a little tip is that you can use the eraser tool and then while you're uh, using it, hit control and then erase things. And it will actually make it so it doesn't delete the, the lines. It actually just, 
smooths them, which means that the line won't appear there, but SketchUp will still act like there is geometry. Uh, what you can also do is just select the whole thing, go to soften smooth edges, and then there's also a soften edges tab in your uh, default tray. I also wanted to show quickly in action sort of why I think that smoothing the edges is so important. So what I'm going to do is just make an odd shape plane. So it's a little bit wavy. I'm going to drop a circle onto it. I'm then going to make the middle of the circle have dirt and the outside of it also dirt. The reason why is I'm going to copy it, move it below, put grass on the layer underneath. And then inside of Lumion, I can make a little garden. I also have a layer of dirt and then I also have grass sprouting out from it. And I think it's a pretty cool trick and it's really, really easy to do. A feature of Lumion that I find really annoying is that when you import an object, no matter how many objects are actually in that FBX or SketchUp file, um, you are always only gonna get one origin point. And the animated phasing does not work as well if you only have one origin point. So what you can do is take all these different uh, components that you have inside of your scene. So this one's just a cube, so it has six different sides. I made six different layers, put each side into one, and then isolated the layers, and then exported them as their own SketchUp file so I could bring that into Lumion. Now, when you do that, all of the origin points will line up. So you can just select all the objects, go to align positions, and everything will snap back together. Then inside of the animated phasing, all you have to do is select all of them, make sure they're in the same sort of like pop-up tab, and then make it so that they have a staggered effect and everything will just kind of slide in. If you have 20 different layers that you're building a house with, maybe it's like poles, roof, that kind of thing, this is a perfect trick for doing that because you can easily export each of those parts as their own uh, group into Lumion and then the animated phasing or as I mentioned, just organization altogether will work much better. Something that I actually learned extremely recently, maybe too recently, is how you can do uniform scaling inside of SketchUp. So I didn't know that if you hit S to go into scaling mode and then you hold control while you move one of the objects, it won't move it out on that side. It'll actually come from the center of the object. This is something you can do in just about any other program. Uh, I just never really looked into it, I guess, even though it's something I complained about all the time. So if you also complained about this, I really hope this helps you out. If you're not already using these add-ons, I highly recommend you get them because they have helped me out tremendously when it comes to actually modeling and rendering inside of Lumion. Lumion does have something where it can deal with edges, but I don't really like using that. Instead, I like to actually uh, bevel the edges with the round corner tool. Uh, it's got a couple different options. You can play around with them. You can choose how big the curve actually is on those corners, and it's extremely helpful. The other add-on that I've already kind of showcased in this tutorial is the Soap Skin and Bubble. It lets you make some really crazy shapes and it's really, really good for landscaping. Something that also goes really well with it is the Sketch UV, not actually for the UV unwrapping, but because it has a fine path tool, which I think is probably one of the coolest things that I didn't know about until recently either. Uh, and it really helps you just select a lot of edges quickly and just cut holes into objects that you just kind of want to get out of there. If you ever find the 3D grass or the leaves are just completely disappearing, there are two things that you can do to make it go back to normal. So if you're using the live link, I find this happens quite a bit with it. Just put a new grass texture on it or just stop the live link, start it up again, and then it should start working. The other thing you can do is actually add more geometry to the plane, and then it allows Lumion to add more leaves to it. Because I do believe that there's almost a limit per rectangle or square that Lumion can put leaves and grass onto. So if you give it more geometry, it is actually able to have better looking grass or just more full grass without that weird clipping effect happening. A recent tutorial that I actually made is on material sets. This is something that I also didn't know until recently, but it is probably one of the coolest features that can really speed up your workflow inside of Lumion. So what you can do is you could go in and theoretically make a material set for every single SketchUp material. And then when you bring it into Lumion, all you have to do is load up that material set and just like that, the preloaded textures inside of your uh, custom textures or your Lumion library will automatically be applied there. So if you have five homes using all the same textures, you can basically texture them all at the same time and it should really, really speed up your workflow. This is, for me, far and away the best thing that I could tell you about using SketchUp to Lumion. Valley Architects does cost money, but I think it's just over $100 US a year and it is the best add-on. It has it quite literally got me into ArchViz. At first, I was really struggling with learning SketchUp. Um, just getting stuff in the 3D warehouse didn't look very good. When I had the ability to start using Valley Architects where I could customize the windows, the doors, put siding on homes, make roads, drop like stripes on those roads, uh, making fences, I still use that in my workflow to this day. I don't think I've ever made a 
Lumion project inside of SketchUp where I haven't used Valley Architects to some degree. Uh, and I think I'm only actually using it on a very like surface level. I think there's even more that I can go into with that. So if people want to see uh, me go like more in depth with Valley Architects, I will spend the time to, to really push it as far as I can go. I just don't know how many of you are actually using Valley Architects. I had reached out to Chuck Valley and he, I never got a response. So I was just honestly curious about how much of the Lumion community is using Valley Architects. If you could please leave a comment below, I'd really appreciate it because this is something I really want to get more into. But in summary, Valley Architects is just straight up the best add-on that I think you can get for SketchUp and it's completely worth the money and it's just it speeds up the workflow so much and you have so much customization i hope you enjoyed the video everyone uh, if you did i'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and also leave a comment below telling me that you did like the video uh, if this is something that has a pretty good reception i think i can make more videos where i kind of condense everything down uh, i know my videos can often be a little bit long even though uh, i think i do cover some pretty interesting topics i know that like some of them are 25 30 minutes long and nobody wants to sit there and watch that even if they are helpful so i am trying to bring the video uh, times down without actually taking away any of the content. So this was a little test in doing that. And I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you can tell me how I did, uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it. If you could subscribe to the channel, if you're not already and ring the bell so you can stick around for some future videos, uh, to everyone that sat through the entire video, I just want to say thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night.